there is a reverent aura surrounding them. They instill a sense of awe. You can almost hear the clop, clop, clop of horses when you pass through them. Covered bridges are more than a unique way to cross a river. They are a portal to our past. They are artifacts of a bygone era. They are our visual connection to our heritage. Park County, Indiana, the covered bridge capital of the world. Driving through the winding roads of west central Indiana affords the opportunity to view these architectural marvels, and in most cases, drive right through them. There is an adrenaline rush when a covered bridge appears up ahead on the road and a chance to travel back in time as you cross the threshold of the entrance portal and enter the darkened tunnel. The actual reason for covering a bridge is simple concerns over longevity. Wood will rot when exposed to rain and snow. A wooden bridge that is exposed to the elements has a lifespan of 10 to 15 years. However, if you cover the wooden timbers and keep them free of the elements, a bridge can easily last 100 years or more. Secondary advantages from having a covered bridge arose from them sometimes becoming the largest covered structure in a pioneer community. It offered a dry place for meetings, special events, weddings, and even political rallies. But why are there so many covered bridges in Park County? The main reason is that the county has a large number of streams and rivers that required pioneers to ferry or ford across them. Fortunately, there was an abundance of natural resources, especially the tall tulip poplar and oak trees here in the county that could be used for bridge building. A carpenter by trade, Joseph Albert Britton, was awarded his first bridge contract in 1868 to build the Narrows Bridge over Sugar Creek. A native of Rockville, Britton built 14 covered bridges in Park County. Now the majority of his bridges were short, single-span bridges, but he did build two two-span bridges. With more than 60 covered bridges to his credit, Joseph J. Daniels is perhaps the most well-known bridge builder in Indiana. Eleven of the 27 covered bridges he built in Park County still stand today. Daniels' first covered bridge was the Jackson Bridge that he built across Sugar Creek in 1861. While all of his Park County covered bridges were built with a burr truss, he used other support truss designs, including a howl truss, in other counties if the contract specified something different. Daniels is well known for building long length bridges, often with multiple spans, including Jackson County's 458 foot four span Medora Bridge, Indiana's longest covered bridge. J.J. Daniels used Rockville as his headquarters and maintained a workyard there for pre-cutting bridge timbers. He built his last covered bridge, the Neat Bridge, in 1904 at the age of 78. At its peak, Park County had 52 and one-half covered bridges within its borders. The one-half of a bridge was derived from a bridge crossing the Wabash River that was shared with Vermilion County, thus giving one-half ownership of the bridge to each county. They were all built between 1856 and 1920. Today, 31 of those covered bridges still stand, with only 10 closed to vehicular traffic. Some have been relocated to protect them, and others have been rebuilt to ensure their continued existence. It takes a lot of effort, planning, and coordination to relocate something as massive as a covered bridge. The longest bridge of all is the West Union Covered Bridge with an amazing length of 315 feet. In 
At the other end of the scale is the shortest covered bridge. At a mere 43 feet in length is the Phillips Bridge. Today, we slow our vehicles while passing through them, as much in reverence of the history we're immersed in, but also because we want to extend the experience of passing through a covered bridge. Almost 60 years ago, it became obvious that the large number of covered bridges in the county was unique. There were 39 of them at the time. So in 1957, the concept of a covered bridge festival was presented by Judy Snowden to the city council and a committee was formed to hold a three-day festival to acknowledge the covered bridges and provide an event for the many tourists to the area. The festival was rather small and was situated around the courthouse in Rockville. Originally built by J.J. Daniels in 1868, the Bridgeton Covered Bridge was closed to traffic in 1967 and was replaced in 2006 after an arsonist burned the original bridge down. It has a length of 245 feet and was built by Clark McDaniel. It uses a burr arch truss and is a two-span bridge. The Catlin Bridge, built in 1907 by Clark McDaniel, and after falling into a severe state of disrepair, was moved in 1961 to the Rockville Golf Course. This 54-foot long bridge currently spans the B. Diddle Creek, which is named for the golf course designer. The builder of the Conley's Ford Bridge was J. Lawrence Van Fossen, and it was completed in 1907. While most covered bridges in the county were built with tulip poplar, Van Fossen used white pine to build this bridge. It is claimed to be the fourth longest single span covered bridge in the world. Harry Evans owned the land next to the bridge that bears his name. The Harry Evans Bridge, built in 1908, is 65 feet long, sports a single burr arch truss, and sets across Rock Run Creek. The road near the bridge has washed out on numerous occasions, and through the years, a nearby farmer has maintained a ford just west of the bridge. The Narrows Bridge was the first bridge built by J.A. Britton, and because of its easy access from a county road, three Turkey Run State Park hiking trails, and canoers on Sugar Creek, it may be the most photographed covered bridge in the state. At a length of 121 feet, this 1882 covered bridge sets adjacent to the Lusk home site and the narrowing rock walls that funneled the water for the Lusk Mill. <music> 